with Shah Assad because Assad of Syria sponsors Hezbollah. And if you remember, Israel and Hezbollah went head to head in Lebanon in the last uh, war or whatever, or how long ago it was, not that long ago. And Hezbollah didn't uh, do too badly. That's the sad truth. And primarily because Hezbollah is not bound by rules of engagement. Hezbollah is not bound by the same rules of engagement that has infected the Israeli defense forces the same way it's infected our military. Hezbollah, ISIS do not fight by any rules. They kill. They take no prisoners. They torture and they maim. That's the only way wars can be won. They're not going to be won with Mr. Rogers' uh, rules of engagement. And so Israel thinks that by taking out Assad, they're going to take down Hezbollah. I don't know if that's 100% true. Not at all. I know this. This is one thing I do know. That when a world power like Russia gets involved in a situation like this and takes a strong position that we're going to support Assad, he's not going to go, he's our ally, we have strategic and territorial ambitions in Syria, and we're going to take them. It involves gas fields. It involves a lot of things. It's our sphere of interest. You're not going to tell us what to do in our sphere of interest. We don't care what you think. We don't care what the UN thinks. We don't care what Israel thinks. They swat them off like flies. The bear is lumbering across that area. And the bear says, this is our backyard. Get the hell out of our berry patch. Just get the hell out of our berry patch. You have no business to be here. That's what's going on on a, on a simplistic level. That's exactly what's going on, for right or for wrong. And when the bear gets through with Syria, not only will ISIS be killed, and you won't see any pictures of it, by the way. I can guarantee you the journalists won't be permitted to send you live footage of the atrocities against ISIS. The same uh, wonderful journalists who are not showing you the rapes and the murders being conducted by ISIS uh, just can't wait to get over there to show you the evil that Russia is doing. Already saw the airstrikes kill children. Second, next second, they're ready. Children were killed. Right away, the children, the sirens went off. All of the CNN reporters, children were killed, children were killed, children were killed. What about the Christian children who've been killed by ISIS? Didn't see any pictures of those, did you? Somehow Wolf Blitzer didn't let those images come out. So at the end of the day, when you have a world power like Russia engaging in the Syria situation, and they're saying we're going to make sure Assad stays, he is our ally, he's a Stalinist, he speaks our language, Russia's moved well beyond the early stages of communism. Do I have to tell you that? You actually think Russia is a communist nation? You actually still think that? Are you still stuck in the Reagan mentality that Russia is the gravest threat on the planet? Are you one of those fools who worked for Ronald Reagan who thinks that Russia is our greatest enemy, not the Islamic State? Well, if you are, I pity you because things have changed. Russia has evolved. China has evolved. Yes, they are dictatorships, but they are not the dictatorships of the 1950s that you grew up on. They have changed and we have changed. This country has become a putative dictatorship under Barack Obama, the great liberal. That's correct. Aldous Huxley warned us in one of his great essays in the 1950s, which I read when I was very uh, impressionable when I was a kid in the 50s. I used to read all of Huxley's work, visited his uh, widow, Laura. I was so crazy about his writings. I read everything he ever wrote. And he, wrote, he warned us that in the future, Russia and the United States would become more and more like each other. He warned us that Russia would become more capitalistic and the United States would become more communistic. Boy, was he ever right. Boy, was he ever right. And if you think this nation is still the city on the hill, a nation filled with freedom, I don't agree with you, not at all, not under Barry Obama. He has put a yoke around all of our hearts. He has put a yoke around all of our hopes. He has he has magnified the fears of most thinking Americans and he's gotten away with it because the weasels in the media continue to trumpet his lies. And so it comes back to the same question. Do you support or oppose Russia's airstrikes today? And I've gone on for quite a long time on why I support the airstrikes. And it comes down to a simple statement. And that is the enemy of our enemy. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. My greatest enemy is not Russia. My greatest enemy are the Islamic murderers. And if Russia wants to kill the Islamic murderers, then Russia is my friend. It's really that basic. It's really that basic. I remember even as a little kid when we were playing war in the streets of the Bronx on Longfellow Avenue, 
we charge up a hill against Bryant Avenue. I grew up in a little street called Longfellow Avenue. It was named for all of the English poets, don't you know, in the South Bronx. And when I was five, six years old, we'd all gang together. We'd get sticks and garbage can covers, and we'd play war. And we try to charge up the hill to knock the kids off the hill above us. It was a sandlot that went up a slippery slope of a hill. And we charge up with the garbage can covers in front of our faces to try to stave off the rocks and the ash that they were throwing down upon us. It was like Roman, Roman pictures. You can't believe these ash, ashes were the size of our fists. It was the ash that was left in the incinerators in the, in the, uh, um, in the tenement buildings. They'd cook the garbage down, burn it to get down, and the kids would pick up the ash like little volcanic ash. And believe me, it hit you in the head. It could split your head open. I, I came back many times with a bleeding head, and my Russian aunt had to tend to the wounds. And she did so without any, any hysteria and sent me back out to go play. She said, go play now. <laughs> go back out there and play and take your garbage can cover too. Please get out. Don't let the door hit you in the you know where. I couldn't go see my mother when I was bleeding from the head from an ash in my head because she would go hysterical. She would she would get though she starts screaming. I was afraid to go in my own house if she saw blood. So I left my poor mother alone. But the point was is that a lot of the kids we fought with <clears throat> from neighboring blocks we didn't even like. But as long as they were willing to come over and help the Longfellow kids take down the Bryant kids, they were our friends. Kids who a few weeks before we fought with were suddenly our allies against the Bryant Avenue kids. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. <laughs> Do you get it? It goes back to a sandlot. There's nothing different on the world stage. Now you're going to hear people pontificating Russia should be stopped, but they don't say how. You're going to hear people screaming all day long, oh, Russia, Russia's evil, Putin's no good. He should be stopped all day long. Putin's no good. He wants to expand his power. No kidding. Do you know a world leader who wants to shrink his power other than Barack Obama? What world leader doesn't want to expand his power other than Barack Obama? Netanyahu certainly wants to expand his power and, and to protect his people. So Putin's doing the same thing. What, he's evil because he's doing what everyone else on the earth is doing if they have a brain and they care about their country? Of course he wants to expand his power. And since there's a vacuum in the Middle East created by Barry, who's been busy, screw, busy screwing the American people and the Republican Party, suddenly the vacuum is being filled by the bear. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's that simple. Don't try to overcomplicate it because you'll make a mistake if you do. How many angels can dance on the head of a pin? Well, I'll let you figure that one out. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. All right, everyone who gets on the air with Michael Savage and millions of followers from here on in will get a free copy of Government Zero. I just got my first copies last night. It's not only an important book, it's the most beautiful cover I've ever seen. I look great. I got to tell you, the older I get, the better I look. I don't know the answer to it. It must be the vitamins, I, a lot of worrying, stress. Anyone who says that stress is bad for you doesn't understand the human condition. If stress killed you, I would have been dead at four. That's all I could. I would have been dead at four or five if stress killed you. I've been a kind of very tense person since I'm a little kid. I worry all the time. I worry about personal things, family things, societal things, international things. I worry about everything. I think worrying is good for you. Worrying can be very good for you if you worry for the right things and come to conclusions and solve the problems. Worrying can kill you if it's an irresolvable issue. I try to come up with conclusions and solutions, and uh, that's why I write books that are so important, because I give you solutions and government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. And I'm going to give out these books today and every day now till the book comes out. And I think you'll enjoy learning more about what's going on in the world around you and try to convert some people to our way of thinking. If you've not gotten on the air, I have some doozy of callers out there who support and oppose the bombing by Russia today. You're not going to want to miss it on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, 
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. We see some very sophisticated air defenses going into these airfields. We see some very sophisticated air-to-air aircraft going into these airfields. I have not seen ISIL flying any airplanes that require SA-15s or SA-22s. I have not seen ISIL flying any airplanes that require uh, um, sophisticated air-to-air capabilities. These very sophisticated air defense capabilities are not about ISIL. They're about something else. Well, that's the NATO commander saying that Russia moved in an awful lot of high-tech equipment and it's not to take out uh, ISIS. Uh, What else is new? And so uh, today, as you know, by now, I've been talking about it for two hours. It's been all over the media. Two hours straight, and I'm not going to stop. Russia bombed uh, Syria. Russia says they're out to take out ISIS. We're being told they're not bombing ISIS uh, strongholds. They're bombing the so-called Free Syrian Army, which is probably true. And uh, on top of that, they insulted us. I should say they insulted Obama, who deserves it. They slapped him around by saying, get your planes out of the air. Now, Obama hasn't said a word, by the way. Can you imagine a nation as leaderless as this? A day like this, which is hanging on the precipice of a war with Russia, Obama is nowhere to be seen. Instead, he sends out Lurch, the liar, the funeral director. John Kerry is about to give yet another lying speech. Another impotent lying speech is about to emanate from Lurch's mouth. And Obama's nowhere to be found. He's at a fundraiser somewhere on the road. Again, again he's on the road raising money for the Democratic Party. That's all. Democrat, Socialist, Islamist Party. Wouldn't you think that a leader should come out and say something? Wouldn't you think that his handlers would say, look, Mr. President, you can't hide like this. You've got to say something. The American people want you to stand up to Putin. You've 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 got to soothe their nerves. They're worried. So he says nothing. Obama says he leads the strongest military in the world. He means he misleads. He has purged the generals right in front of our eyes. Governor Zero, Government Zero has spelled it out to the T in the chapter called Zero Military. And where do I stand on this? I've asked you, and I'm going to say it again, do you suppose or, do you support or oppose today's airstrikes by Russia? I have told you uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I support Russia's airstrikes. Because I believe they will take out ISIS because ISIS threatens them. I don't think you people understand that all you're doing is parroting what you've seen on the media. The New York Times started the, uh, the argument that because Russia is striking the Free Syrian Army, that they're lying about wanting to take down ISIS. I think you're wrong. I think that it's in Russia's national interest to take out ISIS because I've studied it more completely than you have. And what I've read... And what I believe is true is that Chechen fighters are with ISIS and Russia has sent in their speznots, their special forces, and they're supposed to hunt down, specifically hunt down the Chechen fighters and kill them on the battlefield because they don't want them coming back to Chechnya and uh, causing any disturbances for Russia again. And I've also read and I believe it's true that China is involved because China wants their special forces to hunt down and kill the Muslims known as Uyghurs and kill them on the battlefield in Syria. Now, although that is not happening apparently right now, I believe it will happen. And I think, I think that Russia is bombing the Free Syrian Army positions right now in order to sweep away the Free Syrian Army presence in order to go after ISIS because they're one and the same. I don't think you understand something. You actually think the Free Syrian Army is different than ISIS? Well, maybe they're different in, in linguistically, but they're not any different in their goals, and their goal is to knock out Assad. So why are you on the side? I don't understand many people. They're not thinking this through. Why would you want Assad to go? Who do you want to replace Assad in Syria? Let's take it from that point of view in this hour. Many of you are saying, oh, um, Putin's bad. He wants to expand Russia's interests. He wants to reestablish the Soviet Union. He's the most evil on the planet. You're stuck in the Reaganite mentality 
You're stuck in the mentality of the anti-Soviet era of the 1980s. The 